everyone and welcome to Harvest Kids Online. I'm Pastor Lisa and I'm so glad you're here as we continue to take a closer look at our life app of faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Maybe it seems strange to trust in something you can't see, but actually we do it all the time. Let me show you. Everyone stand up right now wherever you are. Go ahead, stand up to your feet. Okay, awesome. Now on the count of three, I need everyone to jump at the same exact time. Ready? One, two, three, jump. Great job. All right, you can have a seat now. Let me ask you something. When you jumped just now, did anyone keep going and float through space without coming back down to the ground? No, of course not. We can trust that gravity will keep us on the ground. We can't see gravity, but we sure would notice if people started randomly floating in the air, wouldn't we? Having faith in God is kind of like that too. Maybe we can't see God with our eyes, but when we focus on the things that He's done in our lives and in the lives of other people, that can help us put our trust in Him and see things from a whole new perspective. And in just a few minutes, we'll learn about how one of Jesus' disciples named Peter learns to see things, and most importantly, people, from a whole new perspective too. But before we do that, let's stand to our feet one more time and worship the Lord together this morning.
Hello, friends. I'm Erica, and welcome back to another week in the Steam Lab. I've had so much fun these last couple weeks discovering and trying new things in here. And usually, whenever I try something new, it feels a little bit like a leap of faith. I'm leaping. Ah! Ugh! Anyway, faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And this week is no different because... Photography! Photography is fun because it mixes technology with art and it lets you make memories. Oh, that's a nice smile. That's beautiful. But I'm still trying to figure things out. Yesterday, I wanted to take some artistic photos of random objects in my life. So I did the telescope, that random black thing with all the wires, that one in the middle, uh, that plant that was really cool, the clamps, there's lots of colors in there, and this. But when I started trying to use the camera, all my pictures were coming out blurry. Can you even tell what that is? Can you, can you even tell what that is? I, I don't even know. Uh, or this? Any guesses? Can you see what that is? Ugh. Turns out with these like fancy camera, oh, okay, sorry. With these fancy cameras, be careful. You have to actually adjust the focus on the lens. See, this is focus, you, and out. Or you can just simply flip it to autofocus. Ding. But then I realized most people make mistakes when they don't know what they're doing. And I was like, and then I realized that I even figured out how to fix the problem myself. And then I was all like, yeah! <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Here's my second try at my photos. Ta-da! Great, right? So, in today's Bible story, we get to hear all about how God changed the picture that Peter saw. But I don't want to give away the details now. You guys gotta take a look for yourself. See you back in a bit. Oh, oh, oh. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 10. As the early church grew, Peter traveled from town to town telling people the great news about Jesus and how he healed sick people. Now in Jaffa, he raised a dead woman back to life through the power of God's spirit. Tabitha, get up. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there with a man named Simon, a leather worker who lived right beside the sea. Peter often went up to the roof to pray. Ah, this is the life. Thank you, Lord, for all these fellow Jews believing in Jesus. But God's plan was bigger than Peter imagined. About 40 miles north, a Roman army commander named Cornelius was praying too. Lord, thank you for all you've given to me and my family. Though Cornelius was not Jewish, him and his family worshiped God. They freely gave to anyone who needed help. While Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel in a vision. Cornelius, the angel's power and brilliance was so strong, Cornelius fell back in awe. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon by the sea. Yes, Lord. The angel vanished. Then Cornelius leapt from his feet. He called on two of his servants and a trusted soldier and told them everything. Leave at once for Joppa. Sir, yes, sir. The trio left around three o'clock, marching at top speed. Around noon the next day, they neared Joppa. At Simon's home, Peter had climbed up the roof to pray. Lord, you've done amazing things here in Joppa. What's next? Mm. <laughs> lunch is next, I guess. While lunch was being prepared, Peter continued to pray. And God sent him a vision. But it wasn't an angel. 
What is happening? It appeared to Peter that something like a large sheet was dropping from heaven. It contained a zoo of animals, pigs and camels, rabbits and birds and reptiles. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter stared in shock. The Jews were forbidden to eat the meats of these animals, which were called unclean. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Two more times, the same thing happened. Then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter blinked and looked around. What does it all mean? At that very moment, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at Simon's front door. Is there a Peter staying here? Up on the roof, God's spirit spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. Still, overwhelmed by his vision, Peter hurried down the steps, ran out the front door where he found the men. I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Sir, we have come from Cornelius, the Roman commander. He's a good man who worships God. The angel told him to invite you to his house so Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Go to his house? Just as it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods, it was also forbidden for Jews to enter the home of non-Jews. Oh! In that moment, Peter understood his vision. God was making a new rule about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but for everyone. Please, come in. We'll leave first thing in the morning. The next day, Peter and the three men set out, along with some of the believers from Joppa. The following day, they arrived at Caesarea. This is the home of Commander Cornelius, sir. Thank you. Peter must have paused for a moment before he entered the house. Though God had told him to come, he had never entered the house of a non-Jewish person. Here it goes. At the home, Cornelius had gathered all his relatives and friends to listen to Peter. Greetings, Peter. We are honored you've come. The commander lowered himself before Peter, showing a sign of deep respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. As Cornelius stood, Peter surveyed the room before him and took a deep breath. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter the home of someone who isn't a Jew, but, but God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius had explained everything the angel had told him, and Peter shared how God sent Jesus here to share God's love, how Jesus taught and heal people through God's power. Then he would be killed, but then God would raise him back to life again. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. All who believe in Jesus have their sins forgiven through his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Glory to God. Before Peter could finish speaking, God sent his Holy Spirit down to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who came with Peter, they stared in amazement. But they're not Jews. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter baptized Cornelius and his friends and family in the name of Jesus. He stayed with them for several days overjoyed by the new perspective God had given. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, sorry, hold on. That's better. Ah, oh, isn't it beautiful how God loves everyone? In our story today, God told Peter to give people a chance even though they were different from him. Give people a chance. 
attached. God showed Peter that his rescue plan is for all of us. God promised Abraham that he would bless the whole world through Abraham's family. Hundreds of years later, one of Abraham's descendants, Jesus, made it possible for the whole world to know God, which is what God wanted Peter to realize. If God loved the whole world through Jesus, you can love other people too. Even if they look different than you, talk different than you, believe differently than you do. In fact, instead of focusing on all your differences, try looking at others the same way God looks at all of us, with love. Here's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. It's like Jesus puts others into clear focus for us so that we can see them the way he does. <laughs> oh, oh wow, you're beautiful. Ooh, I love those shoes, y'all. Yes. Selfie! Wait, okay, wait, eh, eh. Oh wait, oh no, it's, it's a, uh, it's out of focus. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! I gotta put it in auto focus. Oh wait, it's already, it's already in auto focus. My face is blurry. Is it right? It's, okay. Okay, I'll see you later! <laughs> in focus, hopefully. Through a vision, God told Peter that the message of Jesus wasn't just for Jewish people. It was for everyone. God wanted Peter to give others a chance. He wanted Peter to reach out to Cornelius and his family, even though they didn't come from the same background. And because Peter obeyed, Cornelius and his whole household put their faith in Jesus, and the lives of many, many people were changed forever. Because of Peter's faith in Jesus, he was able to see that God's story really was for everyone. Peter knew Jesus, so he was willing to see others the way Jesus did. And that's our bottom line today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. That means God wants us to love all people, even if they're different from us, even if they don't look or talk exactly like you do, even if they like things different than you do. You can still be friends with them. You can still show them the love of Jesus with the words you say and the way you choose to treat them. When we know Jesus, that means we should show love to everyone around us, not just the people who are like us. God made other people just like he made you. He sent Jesus to be their savior too. God loves each and every one of us exactly the same. To him, everyone is super valuable and important. So they should be super valuable and important to us too. Now let's take a closer look at our parent guides together as a family and talk more about how Jesus changes the way we see others. And preschoolers, keep watching for a special lesson just for you from Ollie and his friends. I love you boys and girls, and I'll see you right back here at Harvest Kids Online next week.
Hello friends, and welcome to the clubhouse. It's me, Lucy, and my friend Poppy left us some secret words to find. All I have to do is paint this page, see? I think there's a secret word on here somewhere. Let's keep painting. Do you spy the secret word? I spy with my little eye the word hello. That's how you say hi in English. Can you turn to your neighbor and say hello? Hello to all of you. Should we do another one? I'm gonna try blue this time. Do you spy the new secret word? I spy with my little eye the word hola. That's hello in Spanish. Can you say hola with me? Hola. Now turn to your neighbor and say hola. Yes, I love it. You just said hello in two different languages. Wow. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hola, Lucy. Who? Who? Telling each other hello, are you? Poppy left us these fun different ways to greet each other. Saying hello is fun. Who? Who? But there's so much more to tell others, too. So let's hear this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. and welcome to my cupcake food truck. Do you want to see today's special? Ta-da! <laughs> They're my Tell All the World Cupcakes. I made them because today's story is about how we can tell the whole world about Jesus. If you're ready for a story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Today we are going to play I Spy to find a man named Peter. Do you see him? Get out your pretend binoculars. Look with me. Ready? I spy with my little eye. Peter! Peter was a fisherman. That means he would get in a boat and go out on a lake to catch fish. Peter believed in Jesus because Peter saw that Jesus is alive with his very own eyes. Jesus told Peter and his other friends that he would come back again. But until then, he wanted them to tell everyone that Jesus is alive. And he wants to be their friends forever. Then he left and went to heaven. Jesus' friends did just what he told them to do. They told everyone everywhere Jesus is alive. He wants to be your friend forever. One day, some men who were different than Peter came and knocked on his door. Knock with me, ready? Knock, knock, knock. They asked Peter to come to their house and tell all their friends about Jesus. Peter knew that Jesus loves everyone, no matter what they look like or what language they speak or where they live or what they have done. So Peter said he would go to their house even though they were different than him. Do you see someone that Peter can tell about Jesus? Look with me. Ready? I spy with my little eye someone Peter can tell about Jesus. Peter told his new friends all about Jesus, even though they were different than him. Peter told them about the amazing things that Jesus did. He told them about how Jesus died and came back and is alive. He told them he knows Jesus is alive because he talked with Jesus and even ate food with him. After Peter told his new friends all about Jesus, they believed in Jesus too because everyone can believe in Jesus. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can believe in Jesus? I can believe in Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. 
So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus is alive, and we can tell everyone about it too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, Peter got to tell everyone that Jesus is alive because everyone can believe in Jesus. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I love that we can tell everyone about Jesus no matter how they say hello. Let's see if Poppy left us more words to spy. See you later, bye. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, John 20, 31. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, John 20, 31.